Hi there. This is Live Prayer for here. I want to talk about prepping on the small level. You see them prepping on large levels. They got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. And they just went crazy with it. They're prepping up for 5, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. And that's fine if you can't afford to do something like that. Unfortunately, many of them that does prep like that, they take every little extra dime they've got and they put it into the prepping and they've sacrificed other things in order to prep. Prep can be addictive. Prepping can be like a drug. You can be very addicted to it, very much like an addict to it. Just like anything else, like drinking or drugs or gambling or whatever, it can be very addictive. You do not have to prep in huge masses in order to prep on a smaller scale, a smaller level. And basically what that is simply is doing within your budget. Thinking about maybe surviving a month or two down the road. Looking at other options within a budget. Having extra water. Maybe you live in an apartment. And you can only have 17 gallons of water put up. Or you got two or three uh, cases of the water put up. Or you have a pitcher with filters with it. Extra filters. I have uh, two fil pitchers in my cooler that I use. We make our drinks from the filter water on that. In order to do that, you can still go like to Walmarts and some of the other grocery stores and get jugs of filter water for about 40 cents a gallon in that area. Water never really goes bad. Now, it can be in a plastic container for a long period of time. You see people rotating it out in a day. And you, believe, you won't believe the amount of water I throw away at my job as a maintenance person. I'm a maintenance supervisor at my job and we throw away cases and cases of water because of the date on it says it's got to be thrown away. In that situation, if you want to rotate your water out or you have water, you could simply heat it up. You can run it to a, uh, a coffee pot filter system, whether it's on the, on the a, a wood burning stove or a propane heater or whatever. You can create a filter system of your own in your own home on a small scale to filter the water out and help remove any impurities in it and things like that. So you don't have to prep in huge scale, but look at what you could do with, what you can fix without really having to cook. Um, what you can cook on small scales, what you can survive on in a small scale. You can survive with oats, it's full of nutrition in them. You can survive cooking pasta and stuff. You can survive with rice. You can survive on canned goods. You can survive on dry beans. You can survive on a small level on things. Looking at expiration date is important, yes. You grow back with canned goods. If you are a serious prepper or you've watched the shows where they show the rust around the can and the cans have been put up for a number of years, I rotate up my canned goods. I have more dry beans and more dry products than I do canned goods for a simple reason on it because my dry goods will last longer than my canned goods would in that situation. However, the advantage of the canned goods is you have the liquids in it to help keep you hydrated in a situation. And then you need to decide how you're going to go about that. A simple little thing is I take a can of vegetable soup or vegetable beef and I add one can of mixed vegetables in it, a little extra water, and I'll make enough of a soup meal there for two good sized bowls for two people. So that's what you got to think about is Prep it on a small level. Blankets, at your clothes maybe, whatever it is. You don't have to get massive because un as societies change, more and more people are living in apartments. More and more people are living in smaller homes. 
more and more people have storage buildings because they can't have it in the homes anymore. So life has changed on that basis. More and more people does not have the yard space anymore with the zoning laws and things that has changed it and made it even harder for people to be able to do things they used to do 20 or 30 years ago. <clears throat> and it has a lot to do with the location you're in. If you live in a desert area, you may want to put up more water to, to save. You may want to look at more wa options on how to filter water on things. That's something you may want to look at. No matter where you're at, prepping on a small scale is not bad at all. It's not wrong. It's, to me, it's made sense to think about, well, what about six months down the road? I, I'm on a prepping budget. Let me see, six months down the road. I have a storage building. I live in an apartment. So I'm going to put some things in my storage building to keep there. And I can rotate it out, keep a few extra containers of water there, or some dry beans, or some dry pasta in there, and some containers and seal them up where they'll be safe <coughs> in a situation if I have to. The location of my storage building. It's something I have to think about. How far it would be. Is it going to be within a 5 mile radius. Or a 10 mile radius. Or a 4 mile radius. How close is the storage system to me. Um, my kin folks. Do I have close brothers or sisters. Do I have close friends that I can count on. In a situation like that. Where I can maybe put things in their area as well. You have to think on a small scale level. Getting to know your surroundings in the areas where you're at, uh, the parts and everything where you could possibly put things up somewhere or plant plants there that you know is edible in a survival situation. It's a lot to think about. Prepping on a small scale is where you need to start at. And if you don't get past that small scale, there's nothing wrong with it. Prepping on a large scale is fine if you have the finances and the ability to do this. But at the same time, you've got to look at your other options. Number one is your budget. How many people are you going to prep for? The way I look at it, if I'm prepping for two, I want to figure four people in. Knowledge is a key ingredient in it. Learning about what's around you, what kind of foods are around you, what kind of plants are around you. Learning countless things, that, observing it. Um, being able to walk that five miles to your storage building and finding the options of what you've got to fight to get to that storage building, that situation. Will you be forced to have to stay in that storage building if things got to that point where you would have to leave your home and go into that storage facility? Looking at all these other options and things is something you need to think on in a situation, no matter what it is. Do I want to keep all my food in one location? Do I want to keep have it in multiple locations? Do I have a storage building in the back of my house where I could fix a area up to do it? Can I afford this? Can I afford that? The budget is I buy um, $50 worth of groceries this week, but I want to set $10 of it aside for prepping supplies and dry goods and extra water or whatever. Stocking up on a few necessity things, first aid supplies, aspirins. Um, burn cream or whatever it is, learning about things on a small scale level. That's something you need to think about. Replacing the supplies that you use in a situation like that on a budget, on a low scale level. Prepping on low scale level gives you that fighting chance because even if you prepped on that large scale level and you have years and years of food like some of these people show they have, all it's going to take is someone to come in and take it. And there's going to be somebody out there that's going to know about it. And the bad thing about it is some of the people you think that you trust, that are you very close to, maybe the very ones that's going to come in there and they're going to tell, they're going to tell other people about it. And then someone else is going to know about it. And then you know they're going to be knocking at your door. So thinking about things and surviving in a low-scale level, prepping for a few months ahead, figuring out your area is very important. It's nothing wrong with it. So it's a basic, basic level where you need to start at. It's prepping on low scale levels the way I do. I'm back to basics. I'm about nature. I'm learning. I'm teaching. I'm growing. I'm learning every day. So this is Live Prepper. I want you to be safe, be happy. Bless you all.